Welcome, Kwe Kwe. My name is Crystal and I'm here to welcome you all to a virtual book launch for Nina Lakani's Who Killed Berta Casares, Dams, Death Squads, and an Indigenous Defender's Battle for the Planet. Um, I'd like to open this uh, book launch, this virtual space, by uh, asking you all to take a quick moment with me and ground yourself in your location. For myself, my land acknowledgement will be reflective of my Omami Winini Aki, the Algonquins of Pequaknagon First Nations territory, uh, which is just a small part of the Algonquin territory, unceded Algonquin territory. And again, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, your presence here speaks to the legacy of Berta Casares and She's an indigenous uh, Lensa woman from Honduras who was killed for her tenacity and commitment to life on this planet. Berta is one of the countless women who courageously protect Mother Earth in the face of resource extraction. Since 2014, Kairos Canadian Ecumenical Justice Initiatives has, a pro has had a programmatic focus on the gendered impacts of resource extraction in Canada and the Global South. Kairos works in partnership with women land and water defenders, primarily Indigenous women and organizations, to make visible the impacts of resource extraction on women, to draw attention to women's work in the defense of community rights and the environment, to press for Indigenous women's recognition as key policy stakeholders and decision makers through mechanisms such as free, prior, and informed consent, and is stipulated by the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And we also advocate at Kairos for corporate accountability of the Canadian extractive sector operating abroad. In November 2019, Kairos launched the first phase of the Living Digital Hub, Mother Earth and Resource Extracting, Women Defending Land and Water, which brings together original and existing material to support research, advocacy, information sharing, and movement building on the gendered impacts of resource extraction. So this first phase focused almost exclusively on Latin America. The next phase, which highlights land defense in Canada, uh, will launch this Sunday on June 21st. So we're very, very honored, again, to have you all here and to have all uh, all this interest and reflection of, of, the, of the, the, call, the need for this space. And so now I'm going to just shift and honor and introduce uh, someone, Nina Lakani, who reports on Central America for The Guardian, BBC, Al Jazeera, Global Post, The Daily Beast, and elsewhere. She previously worked for The Independent and her book, Who Killed Berta Carceres, Dams, Death Squads, and Indigenous Defenders, Battle for the Planet was just published this month by Verso Books. And before getting to the discussion portion of the event, uh, Nina will be reading a brief excerpt from her book. Uh, Nina Miigwech, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, thanks everyone for coming. Um, here's the book, you can see. <laughs> I was gonna speak in Spanish, but I can just see from that survey that almost everybody is from Canada. So I'm gonna speak, I'm gonna go ahead and speak in um, English. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna read a, a short extract from the book, which is the subtitle to that is Threats Were the Norm. Copin was founded in 1993 and from the very beginning upset powerful people. Military officers into contraband, logging, landowners, farming, indigenous ancestral land, all these local elites hated us because we made a difference, said Salvador Zuniga, Berta Casares' husband at the time. In the early days, Copin business was mainly con conducted at Berta's family home, and the children remember hushed discussion discussions between their parents after yet another menacing note was delivered by an unknown hand. In my earliest memories, I remember threats and insults against my parents, said um, um, Olivia Zuniga Casares, the eldest daughter. At school, there were children and teachers who said our parents were thieves, millionaires with houses in Miami. 
But Bertita remembers her, Bertita, the second eldest daughter, remembers her siblings when were playing in the garden once when she was nine or 10 years old. And she and Olivia saw an unknown man outside the house with a gun. On another occasion, their dog, Chocolate, saved the nanny who was being attacked by someone from a with a knife. After that, Chocolate was our hero, said Bertita. The fact is there were so many incidents that threat seemed normal to us. Maybe that's why we believe that she would never really be killed. Threats were nothing new, but everything changed in 2013. Berta perceived the dangers connected to Aguazalca, the, um, the Aguazalca Dam, as something more serious. The company's first security chief, Douglas Giovanni Bustillo, an ex-army lieutenant, didn't bother to contain his disdain for Berta and Copin. He was rude and aggressive to people in Rio Blanco, harassing community leaders like Chico Sanchez, who got so tired of the constant calls and offers of bribes that he changed his telephone number. Bustillo also sexually harassed Berta. My life doesn't make sense without you, he wrote in a text message on 20th of September 2013, just a week after testifying against her in court. The company president was different. David Castillo was a privately educated, bilingual, charismatic, retired military intelligence officer who never directly threatened Bertha. He was much too clever for that, and that's why she was afraid of him. In July 2013, a couple of days before Thomas Garcia was killed in Rio Blanco, Castillo and Sergio Rodriguez, DESA's community and environment manager, went to the Copian Training Center in La Esperanza, expecting a private sit down with Bertha. But she wasn't alone. Representatives from Rio Blanco and Copian leadership were also there. I don't make the decision, said Bertha. I do what the community wants. Castillo offered numerous social projects in exchange for ending the roadblock, but the community said no. Rodriguez complained that while the company was trying to find a solution to the conflict, Copin didn't really care about the communities. It just wanted the project gone. Berta and the local leaders viewed the offer, offer of community projects in exchange for supporting the dam as nothing more than a bribe. Not long after Thomas Garcia was killed, Berta asked Siapa Martinez, director of the Feminist Center for Women's Studies, for permission to meet with Castillo in the office. That maldito is promising stuff we don't agree with, but things are heavy. I have to talk to him, she said. The meeting didn't last long. After he left, Berta confided in Siapa. That one scares me, he's a military man. A few weeks later, the court issued the arrest warrant against Berta. You see, this is different, she told her daughters. She did warn us, said Bertita. She often mentioned Bustillo, Jorge Avila, David Castillo, and an unscrupulous family of sicarios who operated around Rio Blanco. I documented the threats, I put out press releases, but honestly, I never thought anything would happen to her. Laura, the youngest daughter, agreed. We knew that she was being monitored, and of course we were worried, but this was normal, or maybe we just didn't want to believe it. Hindsight can be agonizing. Have I run out of time or should I keep going? Sorry. Should... Okay, I'm gonna read a bit more. Berta had begun as a junior partner in Copin, but over time her confidence and standing increased as her vision and analysis evolved. She came to understand capitalism as not only an economic model, but a patriarchal one, which dominated women in different ways. That's why she understood that combat combating patriarchal capitalism had to start with acknowledging and tackling taboo topics like gender violence, sexual harassment, homophobia and inequality within her own organization. Compa, she would say to Sortero Chavarria, her friend, as they drove to meetings, you know you're a fucking machista. I am, you're right, Admana, but I'm trying to change. They were best of friends, and even serious talk like that ended in laughter. In every space, at every opportunity, Berta tackled gender violence and discrimination head on. 
it's us women that wash that wash clothes and cook we need to protect our rivers we are the heart of our families and the struggle cabrones you need to change all of this machista shit is old she tell her listeners at workshops in far flung rural communities it was uncomfortable and sometimes the men stormed out others insulted her but this motivated her to do more in march in march 2011 bertha convoked a women only weekend assembly um during which she tackled big issues like patriarchy machismo feminism racism sexual diversity and sexual pleasure encouraging participants to share personal experiences of violence discrimination and resistance we have to respect differences we women can cannot stay quiet anymore it doesn't matter if you can't read or write you are smarter than many who you can, many who can your experiences matter this is how we change things she said that weekend the women did not cook or clean or even make coffee instead they were served by male cooking members including salvador this made both men and women easy and uneasy at first but it generated debate and helped change norms within cooking it illustrated bertha's political clarity and conviction and a radical vision that no other organization has not even today so Thank you. Thank you Nina for that powerful reading and and thank you for writing uh thank you for writing this book. I had the opportunity to read it over the weekend and uh it's a story that that needs to be told and needs to be heard um far and wide worldwide. Um um your writing is is captivating and you you manage to capture Berta. Um I remember at the World Social Forum in 2016 Honduran a uh, journalist and friend of Berta uh, Felix Molino Molina said that Berta had three qualities that made her a, such a powerful advocate uh and a defender in did she's indigenous she's a woman and she's a feminist and um all that was very clear from your 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 readings uh um just now and you've also in your book you capture and in the reading as well the context the history the systems in Honduras including uh colonization appropriation of land discrimination economic policy neoliberal policies free trade agreements uh US intervention patriarchy all these systems that led to Berta's murder and ultimately i think make it so difficult to answer that question who killed Berta who as in an individual because it's this web of systems and policies um anyway i'm i'm Rachel Warden i uh i work at Kairos uh as manager of uh, partnerships uh and it's a real privilege to moderate this this book launch and and this discussion um and i'm joined here uh with Nina Lakani and two other amazing uh land defenders from Latin America who I have the pleasure of introducing um primero uh quiero presentar a uh, Avidalina Morales Avidalina uh, Morales es bueno una figura uh, clave en la lucha contra la minería en El Salvador uh, que que duró 12 años um, hasta la obtener la, la ley de prohibición en 2017. Ella es una lideresa comunitaria, ecologista, activista y ahora es uh, presidente de la Asociación de Desarrollo um, uh, Desarrollo Económico Social en Santa Marta. Uh, También Berta, um, perdón, Vidalina ha visitado Canadá en varias ocasiones para hablar uh, sobre uh, la injusticia de minería en, en, uh, y, y denunciar uh, la, la injusticia de minería canadiense en, en El Salvador. Y también fue una, es una amiga de, de Berta. Um, también quiero presentar a uh, a otra compañera defensora, uh, Yvonne Ramos. Uh, Yvonne Ramos viene de, de Ecuador 
y ella trabaja por Acción Ecológica hace 27 años. Sí. Eh, uh, Acción Ecológica es una un contraparte de, de Kairos de casi 20 años. Ella es la coordinadora de una articulación de mujeres, Sara Manta, Wormekuna, War, War, hijas de Maíz, que es una coalición de mujeres defensoras y de derechos humanos de las mujeres y de la naturaleza en, en Ecuador. Um, so, bienvenida a Vidalina y bienvenida a Ivonne. Y uh, voy, a, voy a hacer uh, una pregunta a cara de las panelistas. Um, I'm, I'm going to, to start uh, um, uh, with a question for, for you, uh, for, for you, Nina. Um, and uh, you have about seven minutes to answer the question. Um, uh, and uh, for all of you, um, you will be uh, uh, given sort of a five minute warning and then at six and a half minutes, I'll, I'll, I'll appear. <laughs> um, but um, I, I wanted to ask you, um, Nina, um, uh, um, around um, the book, as I said, you, you do this amazing job of tracing and outlining all the actors and policies and institutions and systems that led to the uh, um, the focus and the aggressive resource extraction in Honduras, um, the increased need for land defense and the increased attacks and criminalization of land defenders. Um, I was wondering, based on all these interviews that you did uh, on the research you did for this book and your work as a journalist in Central America more generally, what concerns you and what inspires you about the defensive territory especially when it comes to women land defenders. Hi. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess just to start to say that, you know, um, you know, what I try to do in the book um, is, is um, you know, I, I tell the, the story of the life and death of Bertha Cáceres because you can't understand, you can't begin to understand why she was murdered without understanding who she was and where she came from. You know, and I can't, and, um, and you, you know, it's a cliche, but you can't understand the present without understanding the past. That's absolutely right. And, and I think as well, you can't understand the life and death of Baza Cáceres without understanding the context in which she lived and died. And by context, I mean political, historical, geopolitical, um, military, social, um, and economic, you know, and all of those different, um, Pull push factors, they um, they work together, right? And so, um, so I think that's just the basis of understanding the defence of land um, generally, you know, the defence of natural resources generally, and uh, and you know, and specifically in the case of Bertha. Um, I mean, the 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 battle for land and natural resources, or the, ex I'll put it this way, the exploitation of natural resources in land is not a new story in Central America or Latin America. You know, I say this in the book and it's a sweeping generalization, but I think it pretty much is true. Every battle has always been about land and it still continues to be so. Um, and, um, you know, when you, even if you go back just a few decades and you go back to the dirty wars and the civil wars, um, of El Salvador, Honduras, of all of it, you know, we've, across across the across the continent, while political certainly in Central America, while it turned, you know, Central America was turned into, uh, you know, um, a, a proxy for this uh, for the Cold War between the United States and Russia. A lot of that, a lot of the, a lot of the war in, a lot of the bloodshed that came before and during. Um, was about a battle for the land and a battle for the riches and natural resources um, um, in each of these territories. Um, and I, I mean, I guess what we've seen since the peace accords, and I would argue that a motivation for the peace accords, for all of the peace accords um, in Central America and, and even recently in, in Colombia has been um, partly at least motivated by the desire of 
national and international investors to exploit land, you know, for, for, for minerals, for energy, for um, cash crops, for, um, yeah, for dams, for, you know, for rivers, for, you know, for what, for all of those different elements that we, you know, together make up the extractive industry. And we've really seen this roll out in a, you know, without cessation really since the, since the, you know, since the peace accords were signed across the region, you know, so really since the early nineties. Um, um, and, 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 and at, you know, and uh, during that same period, We've seen, you know, repression, the, the use of force, the use of state, um, of, of you know, of state um, resources um, to repress and um, to, you know, violently repress to crack down on those engaged in the defence of land and territory and water and natural resources also isn't new. There are new things that have evolved. The, you know, these 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 struggles and the and the crackdowns have evolved, and we saw that in the case of Bertha, which I'll come on to talk about now. Um, but you know, um, and and in this whole period, with you know, women have been at the forefront of defending land and defending water. You know, that short passage that I just read, Bertha explaining or talking to women at that meeting, saying, you know, it's us, it's us women that are at home. We're the ones that are using water. We need the land, you know, to feed our children. That has always been true, you know, and I think women have always been involved in the defence of their territories um, because land rights are human rights, you know, um, water rights are human rights, land rights are indigenous rights. You, you can't separate these different things. They're all part and parcel of the fundamental, you know, facets of basic human rights that, um, that, that that enable or 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 uh, or prevent individuals and communities from living dignified lives in which they and their children are allowed to fulfil their potential, you know, um, and free lives. I mean, what I've you know, I think what you know, what I've seen, and Beta is in a way slightly an exception with this in some ways, you know, um, but generally speaking, um, when all the women that I've met in across the region involved um, people like Vidalina, you know, and many others involved in the in the in the in the struggle and the um, for you know to defend land and natural resources is that they do that on top of all of the other responsibilities they have, which are given to them for being a woman, you know. So on top of all of their responsibilities in the home, with their children, with their grandchildren. Um, you know, cooking, cleaning, washing clothes, all of those things are on top of, you know, that, those, those responsibilities very rarely go away. In the, in, in the case of Bertha, it was slightly different, um, that she became the international face of Copin and from the beginning was doing lots of sort of traveling, making connections, making alliances and learning from indigenous struggles and other rural communities, not just across Mesoamerica, across the world, you know, um, and that in itself, you know, opened her, and this, and um, this happens to many women who are involved in social struggles and land, you know, the defense of land, is that they just by being daring to be present in that public sphere, they are subjected to, you know, intense criticism, you know, I mean, I write about this in the book that it hurt Bertha terribly to be considered and called a bad mother, but including by those in her own family, that people that she, somebody that killed, who cared more about the indigenous people than that she cared about her own children. You know that criticism of, um, you know, labelling somebody a bad mother um, and a bad woman because you're, you know, you're not fulfilling those roles that the patriarchal, uh, you know, uh, society d demands of you. I think is something that all women involved in any type of struggle and, and any type of sort of um, political or public life face, continue to face today. Um, and then, you know, there are, there are, they also face the same and different um, um, attacks. You know, I think the sexual harassment, um, you know, is, is, is obviously an obvious and key um, way of trying to, 
threaten and intimidate women involved in different struggles, you know. Um, and I think, um, you know, we've seen, there's been, you know, I, I remember in Honduras, Jazz did a study saying that actually, when you looked at defend, you know, de 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 defensores and defensoras, you know, that actually the number of threats wasn't different in terms of men and women. But what was different is that women, those threats were more likely to turn into physical attacks against the against women and against men. Um, and you know, and I think that um, yeah. So I think that these same sort of tools are used, whether they be threats, bribes, attacks, sexual harassment. They're all used in different, slight, in slightly different ways, you know. And this sort of, um, this I think, this real attempt to discredit women and to try and intimidate them out of these very machista um, spaces, you know. Like um, in the case of Bertha, she was dealing with a dam company where, you know, several, several they were all, you know, all, almost all men, you know. Um, including the security to chief, the managers, many of them had military backgrounds, you know, and she was often in these spaces fighting herself. Um, and so I think it, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible, you know, and it's, and it's meant to be that way, you know, and I think part of the reason Bertha was killed was because she was a woman and was because she was an indigenous woman. I think in this machista sort of patriarchal economic and political model in which um, she existed and we exist, that the idea that an indigenous woman could interrupt, could um, stop them was just intolerable, you know, and it was unacceptable. And she was a bad example to others and that that's, and, you know, and that they couldn't have it. And, and they tried to neutralize her, try to silence her in using many different tactics. And these tactics will be familiar to people like Vidalina who, was you know there and active during the El Salvador um, you know um, civil war these counterinsurgency tactics you know the whole gamut of bribes and threats and intimidation and you know defamation campaigns criminalization all of that same sort of range of tactics were used against but and are used against women and male defendants today um, and in the end Roberta because they couldn't stop her they killed her. Um, I mean, I think it is. A, I think it's being a defending land. You know, Latin America is the most dangerous place, region in the world to defend land and natural resources. Um, and part of it is part of that reason is also because people people like pe people defend their land and natural resources. You know, they know their rights and they organise and they group together and they um, and they and, and and many of these back many of these community struggles are led or co-led by women i think to see women um the way women um manage those spaces and communicate and have them have their voices and and who they represent and how they represent um, different perspectives is so important and it's really inspiring I think you know I think in, in, in any workspace in any arena whether it's political social um, <coughs> labor it, having a diversity of voices gender sexuality um, ethnicity age is vitally important you know and I'm so yeah I think um, just to finish that women um, are in these spaces they've always been leaders um in the region in terms of um in, in, in struggles and movements um um in, indigenous and rural um for the defense of land and territories and for the defense of natural resources and um, and they do that under particularly harsh conditions and particularly you know in conservative machista patriarchal sort of um context um, and they do that on top of all the, the other responsibilities that are um, that are expected of them just for, be, for, for being a woman you know for being women um, and so there is very much a lot to be inspired by um, and to admire um, and you know I think that the response in terms of the support and encouragement and um, yeah that 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 the international community <coughs> needs to needs to be given 
to women to female defenders is 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 huge but also quite quite particular in the support and resources that they may need to stay safe and to keep their families safe and to be able to continue in the struggles that they're involved in thank you thank you nina thank you for for your clarity on uh, i think the critical role of of, of women, particularly indigenous women in, in defending the environment and defending land and territory, but as well the, um, the, uh, the, str the struggles and the particular struggles of women, the particular struggles um, of indigenous women and um, that this struggle is a, 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 f a feminist struggle. Um, I thank you. Thank you so much for your, your clarity. Um, I want to turn now to um, to, to Vidalina Morales, um, voy a hacer esta pregunta en, uh, en español. Um, Vidalina, bienvenida. Um, Vidalina, um, como, una, como una, un, una amiga, no compañera en la lucha de, de, de Berta, quiero, quiero preguntar um, de esta pregunta. Que, uh, Berta, es como ha convertido casi en, un, en una figura mítica. ¿Qué, ¿Qué te gustaría que el mundo supiera de ella, su amiga, la defensora, etcétera? Hola, 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 compañeras, amigos, amigas, creo que hay conectados en, en esta actividad. Un saludo a todas y a todos. Eh, a mí cuando me invitan a hablar de Berta siempre no deja de darme eh, nervios porque le conocí en momentos muy difíciles de la lucha armada acá en El Salvador y desde ese momento creí en la valentía en la fuerza, en el coraje de esa mujer que con los años le seguía encontrando ella trabajando muy fuertemente por su copín al que amaba tanto, eh, por sus pueblos originarios. Le fui encontrando en esos eventos Gran, grandes que se hacían desde el Copín, como por ejemplo hubo un, un evento fuerte en el 2013, en un evento sobre militarización, en donde se abordaban esas, esas temáticas extremadamente peligrosas para un país como Honduras en ese entonces, porque recién había salido de, de, de un golpe de Estado. Pues... La verdad que Berta para, para mí y para el mundo, como lo decía al inicio usted, Ra Raquel, se ha convertido casi en, un, en una figura emblemática. Yo recuerdo hace unos tres, cuatro años, recuerdo que viajé a Colorado, a Denver, y en un jardín botánico, ahí estaba el rostro de Berta, muy bien adornado con plantas botánicas. Jamás imaginé que le iba a encontrar su, su, su imagen en un centro, en un lugar donde había muchas plantas, en un jardín botánico. Imagínense, eh, Berta en vida también. Era una mujer interse, interse, perdón, intercionalista, ¿verdad? Y, y, y le conocí, pues, en esta lucha que en, lo, en la última década se ha vuelto una lucha más que necesaria, urgente, en defensa de nuestros bienes comunes, en defensa de nuestra madre naturaleza, en defensa de la vida. Ahí encontré a Berta. Y como bien lo decía en su libro, Berta también corregía de manera 
muy, muy, muy fuerte actitudes de compañeros que prácticamente eh, están muy penetrado en ellos el machismo. Y los corregí así con su carácter, con ese carácter de una mujer fuerte, de una mujer muy valiente. Y por eso yo retomo una, una opinión de una compañera, es que dice, Berta, no cupo en, en ninguno de los, de los marcos que la sociedad nos impone. Rompió todos esos esquemas que la sociedad nos impone como mujeres. A la sociedad le interesa que estemos como mujeres sumisas, como mujeres eh, que todo pues está, tenemos que estar, digamos, diciendo que está bien. Berta no, no cupo. Berta rompió el machismo, rompió el patriarcado, luchó contra este sistema, contra este modelo neoliberal, contra este modelo patriarcal, capitalista, y las denuncias que ella hacía eran tan contundentes. Y eso, por supuesto, no le gustó a quienes no quieren escuchar este tipo de, de, de verdades. Una verdad que les dolió, le, le dolió mucho al poder económico, al poder transnacional, que fue al final el culpable de que Berta... Eh, fuera asesinada y eso lo, lo sabemos porque Berta luchaba junto a su copín, junto a sus pueblos eh, originarios porque no se construyera una represa en, es, en ese río tan maravilloso que le daba la vida a todas esas comunidades rechazó hasta las últimas hasta el último momento la construcción de esa represa en el Río Blanco. Y eso le llevó a la muerte. Ese carácter fuerte de Berta es el que, eh, el que digamos, nos inspiró y, y seguimos creyendo en, en ese ejemplo, en ese legado de lucha, en esa mujer fuerte, valiente, luchadora. Una gran mujer, yo diría, un ejemplo, un modelo a seguir. Eso es, pues para mí, Berta, después de muerta y en vida, siempre fue una inspiración. En lo personal, les decía, cuando inicié, le conocí cuando yo, cuando éramos apenas mujeres jóvenes, muy jóvenes, yo apenas de 21 años, ella creo de 20, 19, porque somos casi de la misma edad. Y en ese momento, esa mujer me inspiró mucho. Pero también debo decir que le conocí a esa mujer humilde, a esa mujer soportó. Eh, situaciones muy adversas. Yo recuerdo estando viviendo en el mismo, en la misma, en el mismo lugar, en la misma casa, como su, por supuesto, eh, la, la molestaba. Le, eh, Berta, como era tan humilde, ella no podía, eh, o sea, no le, no le no le decía nada y, y este muchacho Virelina, estamos teniendo eh, problemas escuchándote con sí. frecuencia así sí. a, a sí, de mal gusto a ella y ella era una mujer humilde que sabía soportar ¿No? Bueno, gracias, gracias, Virilina. ¿Me puede escuchar? Sí, muchas, muchas gracias que... para su 
Hello. Oh, sí. Sí. Muchas, Hola. muchas gracias, Fidelina, por para su su voz de una de una amiga. Yo sé que es eh, una una compañera en en la lucha por para la justicia. Yo sé que es muy difícil de hablar por solo cinco minutos de una de una amiga y una una mujer tan tan uh, tan 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 grande tan tan uh, Uh, una, una mujer como, como, uh, como Berta. Y yo creo que también uh, tú, Berlina, es una mujer que rompi, está rompiendo los esquemas. Um, cuando escuché uh, su descripción de, de Berta, so puede verlo también en, 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 en ti. Um, ahora voy a, voy a pasar a una pregunta a Ivonne, a Avon, Ivonne Ramos. Uh, de, de acción ecológica. Uh, Ivonne, um, no sé si tú puedes uh, uh, hablar acerca del legado de Berta Cáceres, uh, particularmente para las defensoras de Avia Ayala en América Latina. ¿Cuál es uh, la, la legada, la legado de, de ella en su experiencia. Bien, muchísimas gracias a Kairos por esta invitación a participar en este espacio. Quisiera arrancar una reflexión a partir de una frase dicha por una mujer indígena en el Ecuador, líder histórica del movimiento indígena, ella se llama Dolores Cacuango, y ella decía, somos como la paja del páramo que se arranca y vuelve a crecer. El páramo está a 4.000 metros de altura y el páramo son unas plantas que son las que protegen y permiten la regeneración del ciclo del agua. Es un, es un lugar sagrado para el mundo indígena, pero además es un lugar maravilloso. Así es lo que ocurrió con, con Berta, así es lo que ocurre con muchas lideresas que han muerto en estos procesos de defensa. Son como la paja del páramo que se arranca y vuelve a crecer. Berta es una semilla sembrada en el vientre de la tierra y en el espíritu de todas las mujeres defensoras. Berta Cáceres ha sido la fuente de inspiración para la emergencia y la consolidación del proceso de organización y articulación de los mu movimientos de mujeres defensoras de los territorios y de la naturaleza, de las defensoras de los derechos de las mujeres en toda la América Latina. Y estoy aquí invitada porque soy parte de la Red Latinoamericana de Mujeres Defensoras de Derechos Sociales y Ambientales, como miembro de Acción Ecológica y también como miembro de la Articulación de Mujeres Defensoras Aramanta Guarmijuna, que son mujeres indígenas y no indígenas que en el Ecuador luchan por defender la Pachamama. La Red Latinoamericana de Mujeres Defensoras es una organización de mujeres que está presente en 11 países de la Via Yala que inciden en las políticas, proyectos y prácticas que contribuyen a la defensa de los derechos de las mujeres, de los derechos de nuestros pueblos, de los derechos de la naturaleza y de los sociales y culturales que son vulnerados por proyectos extractivos mineros que afectan directamente a las mujeres en El Salvador, en Colombia, en el Ecuador, en Perú, en Bolivia, en Uruguay, en Chile, en Argentina, en Brasil y en Guatemala. Y creo que es muy importante entender por qué razón es que las mujeres específicamente y especialmente en estos nuevos tiempos son el enemigo número uno del modelo extractivista. Y creo que la reflexión pasa por el hecho de considerar que las mujeres partimos de valores y paradigma, paradigmas que son parte de nuestra identidad diversa y cultural y parte de nuestra condición de mujer que nos permite priorizar el carácter sagrado de la vida y la necesidad de cuidar a la Pachamama, a la naturaleza, como la dora de vida. Y que lo que nosotros tenemos en nuestras manos es un encargo de nuestros abuelos y es un patrimonio sagrado que debemos entregar a las generaciones del futuro, mejor de cómo lo recibimos. Partimos de la necesidad de que los equilibrios de la Pachamama, de la naturaleza y del ser humano son imprescindibles, más aún en estos momentos 
en que la pandemia nos ha demostrado que si el equilibrio de la naturaleza es quebrantado, el ser humano está muy vulnerable y la posibilidad de la extinción del ser humano y de la, del planeta eh, sea un caso inminente. Somos testigos del momento en el que se están incendiando continentes enteros y que esos genera, son producto de los cambios climáticos que han sido causados por la actividad extractivista indiscriminada en todas las partes, en todos los continentes. Decir que existe un vínculo entre las mujeres y el territorio, un vínculo que es inquebrantable, es el espacio donde se reproduce la vida. Y esto nos une en, el, en un lazo mucho más fuerte, más allá del económico. Es un lazo simbólico, es un vínculo de arraigo y es una pertenencia histórica. Y en verdad, esta perspectiva de las mujeres, de las culturas indígenas, esa, esa manera de ver la vida no comulga con la visión del modelo civilizatorio patriarcal, que es extractivista, que es acumulador, acumulador de dinero y acumulador de poder, que ve a la naturaleza, a los seres humanos, a las mujeres, a los pueblos diferentes como fuente de explotación y de destrucción. El ejercicio del poder colonialista que hace más de 500 años conquistó las Américas aún hoy reproduce las prácticas tradicionales en base del uso de la violencia, en todas sus dimensiones, y también el uso de los estímulos positivos, económicos o en el compartimiento del poder destructor, para absorber esas lógicas y esos propósitos de los conquistadores sobre los pueblos conquistados. Y son los hombres mayormente los que han sucumbido en nuestros pueblos a la imposición de ese modelo extractivista patriarcal. Es por eso que la emergencia de las mujeres como lideresas del proceso de defensa territorial a partir de los años 90 surge como una posición que enfrenta a ese poder extractivista patriarcal. Es un poder antagónico es un, a, a ese modelo civilizatorio y esta que se, que se fundamenta en la explotación de recursos naturales. Y entonces es precisamente por esa razón que este modelo patriarcal violento se constituye la violencia que ellos ejercen, que este modelo ejerce en, en contra de las mujeres, se lo hace finalmente para controlar y para discriminar y para descomponer el tejido social, la articulación social que fue el fundamento y la fortaleza de los pueblos, tanto indígenas como campesinos en nuestra América Latina. Y esto se hace para satisfacer los intereses de grupos económicos vinculados a las esferas y a los gobiernos nacionales que están funcionales al plan de las corporaciones transnacionales. Entonces, ese uso progresivo de la violencia que también pasa como por, un, por un, un, un esquema de ejercicio de violencia que va desde la estigmatización y el desprestigio, pasa por el hostigamiento y la persecución y el uso del crimen común para perseguir a las mujeres, el uso de la violencia de Estado, la violencia de género y la violencia sexual, hasta llegar al uso, al, digamos, al, al, a los asesinatos y son patrones que se utilizan en toda la América Latina. ¿no? Nosotros estamos viendo la situación de Berta, es una situación que se ha multiplicado en, muchas, en muchos países de nuestro continente. Y esto también o provoca el despojo de tierras. ¿no? Y se plantea esto como una diferencia de género, porque definitivamente el momento que se genera el despojo de la tierra, el despojo de la Pachamama, para las mujeres es mucho, más, mucho, mucho mayor el daño porque la seguridad alimentaria, la soberanía alimentaria, la supervivencia de sus propios pueblos, de sus propias familias, depende del bienestar y de la salud de ese entorno, de esa naturaleza, de ese territorio. Y entonces el despojo de las tierras también se da a través del uso de la violencia. Vemos Gracias. que la... ¿Perdón? Gracias, Ivonne. Es que... De, 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 desfortunadamente no tenemos um, mucho, mucho más tiempo y queremos... Um, Ok, tenemos un poquito de tiempo de ver el video, pero muchas gracias para sus, uh, sus palabras tan claras y estos uh, vínculos con, eh, entre extractivismo y violencia y particularmente violencia contra la mujer. Muchas gracias de, 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 la, de esta perspectiva de la, de la red. 
um, yo creo que antes de terminar y antes del agradecimiento, queremos ver uh, un, un video, ¿verdad? De, 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 la, de la red, uh, que es, um, es hecho por la red, es, es un discurso de Berta uh, cuando ella obtenió, uh, ob, uh, obtenió el primero Uh, el premio Goldman, uh, y es, es uh, hecho por, por las mujeres de la red. Bueno, aquí está. Gracias. En nuestras cosmovisiones somos seres surgidos de la tierra, el agua y el maíz. De los ríos somos custodios ancestrales, el pueblo lenca. Resguardados además por el espíritu de las niñas. Peña que dar la vida de múltiples formas por la defensa de los ríos. Dar la vida por el bien de la humanidad y de este planeta. Despertemos, despertemos humanidad, ya no hay más tiempo. El río Hualcarque nos ha llamado. Así como los demás que están seriamente amenazados, debemos acudir. Despertemos, despertemos humanidad, ya no hay tiempo. La madre tierra, militarizada, cercada, envenenada. Donde se violan sistemáticamente los derechos elementales. La madre tierra nos exige actuar. Humanidad. Ya no hay tiempo. Construyamos entonces sociedades capaces de coexistir de manera justa. De manera digna y por la vida. Juntémonos y sigamos con esperanza defendiendo. Y cuidando la sangre de la tierra y los espíritus. Despertemos humanidad. Nuestras conciencias serán sacudidas. Por el hecho de estar solo contemplando la autodestrucción. Basada en la depredación capitalista, racista y patriarcal. Despertemos, despertemos humanidad, ya no hay tiempo. Despertemos, despertemos humanidad, ya no hay tiempo. No por tantas la cima de suda, hay un astro de nitida. That was beautiful. Um, uh, many times it's said about uh, uh, Berta that she no murió, se multiplicó. She didn't die, she was multiplied. And, and you see that in the voices of, 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 of women and women defenders um, throughout Latin America and throughout the, the world. Um, I, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank everyone. I, I want to thank you for being part of this discussion. Um, I want to uh, encourage uh, everyone to, uh, to read the book. Um, we've had, um, we've been given a taste of it. Um, we know uh, who Berta is, um, uh, how, how, she, um, how she lived, who her friends were, how she defended her territory, um, how she was an indigenous woman, how she was an activist. Um, And we've heard uh, from her friends and, and, and people in her networks. Um, we want these discussions to continue. So we're encouraging you to, to um, buy, buy the book and if possible, by supporting your, your favorite independent, independent bookstore. Um, we would be interested uh, as Kairos to continue these discussions and, and to facilitate a, kind of a, a, a book club or a book discussion on, on this book. So, Please uh, let us know if you're interested in, in doing that and being part of that, those, that, those book clubs. Um, uh, and uh, Gabriel Jimenez, who is our Latin America Partnerships Coordinator, will uh, send you information um, about that as well. We'll have information on, on our, our, our website. Um, uh, as well, um, I wanted to uh, 
I wanted to let you know that there, um, as part of uh, Indigenous Women's Month, which is, 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 is June for, for Kairos, it's Indigenous Women's Month, we have uh, a number uh, of other events, uh, including on Thursday, um, we have another webinar uh, uh, called Stories of Change, Women Defending Land and Water in Canada and Brazil. So that will be Thursday afternoon, and there's information on our, our website about that as well on, uh, on Sunday, um, June 21st, we will be launching the, uh, the Canadian content of the, the, the Mayor Hub. So this is the digital hub on Mother Earth and resource extraction that, that Crystal mentioned. So stay tuned for more information about that on, on, um, on, on Sunday. Um, but I really wanted to take some time to thank everybody who was involved in this and so, uh, I think everybody's going to come up on the screen now so we can see <laughs> everybody, including, including the translators. So I want to, I want to thank uh, Nina Lakani. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you for writing the book. Uh, I want to thank Vidalina Morales. Uh, I want to thank Yvonne Ramos. I want to thank the Red de Latin Americana, de Mujeres Defensoras. Um, I want to thank Crystal. Uh, Desele for opening. I want to thank Gabriela Jimenez, who has uh, been behind the scenes. She is responsible for bringing us all together and making this happen. And yes, she is there. So thank you, Gabriela. Um, thank you, uh, Paulina Baez and uh, Kate Stubbs for interpretation. Um, please, uh, please remember to um, to. Uh, to follow the, the Mayor Hub on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, look, look to our website for um, upcoming webinars. Uh, please buy the book and please participate in our, our discussions uh, about this book and uh, keep, uh, keep Berta Cáceres multiplying. Um, Berta Cáceres uh, presente. And um, so thank you everybody for being a part of this and, um, and, and good evening, have a good evening.